My name is Juanita Archuleta and I work here on the Ninja Turtle Business Development Team. We have a very special event for you today with Dean Rogers of Case & Company. I would like to mention that it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity futures contracts in Forex. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and will depend on your specific circumstance and financial resources. It is possible to lose all funds deposited with your broker and could even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at the following link for a full copy or for more information on the CFTC full risk disclosure. Also, please remember that these webinars are not a solicitation nor a recommendation, but simply educational in nature. This presentation is presented by NinjaTrader LLC, which is a technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage-related questions should be directed to the NinjaTrader brokerage at the following phone number or by directly emailing them at brokerage at, excuse me, brokerage sales at NinjaTrader.com. In this webinar, Dean will present several new ways to identify effective trade setups using case that's where. Thanks again for your attendance, and without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to the room Dean Rogers. Go ahead and take it away, Dean. All right. Thank you very much, Juanita. I appreciate the introduction there. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dean Rogers. Um, if you can, just so that I can make sure that you guys can hear me, if you can type a Y into the uh, chat just so that I know. Looks like we've got a couple of those, so thank you very much. Um, Again, yeah, my name is Dean Rogers. I'm the Senior Consulting Analyst for Case & Company. I've been working with Cynthia Case, the founder of Case & Company, and working with Case and their clients for over 18 years now, almost 19 years now. So um, it's been a, while, been a while. I guess you, you can say I'm starting to become an old timer in the, uh, in the markets. But um, over the years, you know, I've worked very extensively uh, with Case and Case's clients in developing ways to use statware and one of the things that I'm going to be showing today you know we give these webinars from time to time we do a lot of educational videos and materials write articles blog posts that kind of stuff but usually it's a very uh, generic set of rules or guidelines that we use for statware and so for those of you that aren't familiar with statware um, it's a it's a set of indicators that were developed by uh, Cynthia Case who was a, uh, a crude trader an oil product trader back in the 80s um, for Chevron and Standard Oil and, and then she did some stuff with the Saudis and Chemical Bank in the early 90s. She launched Case & Company in 1992 and a big part of that was the indicators that she had developed uh, for Case Statware. And over the years we've developed and, and, and fine-tuned and honed these. Uh, but for the most part we've really always showed a, a very traditional set of guidelines for using Statware. And that's really just to get people introduced to using the ideas behind Statware, what the indicators are, what makes them special, what are they actually showing you on screen. Uh, but one of the things that we haven't done a lot of in, in these webinars that we usually get into with more advanced traders or with traders that have been using the Statware for a while, uh, either through trial or, or through subscription, is some more advanced trading techniques. And they're not necessarily more advanced in the sense that they're harder, but they're just different ways of looking at the indicators and different ways of using the signals for different trading styles. And that's one of the things that I don't think a lot of people realize about Statware is, you know, it's not a black box system. This isn't a, a, a trading system uh, that, you know, you're going to throw up on the screen and back test and do those diff different kind of stuff. You can do that, but really it's a set of indicators that are built so that you can adapt the indicators and improve your trading results or hopefully improve your trading results. Use the indicators to make better and more informed trade decisions. And so with that, that doesn't mean that the guidelines that we generally teach are the only way to use Statware. There's no single time frame or bar length or bar type or trading style that Statware is a best fit for. Um, in fact, a lot of the guidelines that we show traditionally uh, in, in previous webinars that you can view on NinjaTrader's YouTube page or on our website really are geared more towards kind of a swing trader mentality where we're looking to get in early on a trend and scale that trade up uh, to a longer bar length once we get confirmation, take a little more risk and um, hold a trade through a, through a trend or through a swing and then scale out of the trade, take profit at the appropriate times based upon the signals. 
But a lot of the traders that approach me these days are, you know, trading uh, three-minute or five-minute charts or one, in some cases one-minute charts or whatever it may be, range bar charts and different kind of stuff like that, where they're much faster moving, a little bit more of maybe a scalper's mentality um, uh, or, or some sort of hybrid between scalping and, and swing trading or day trading. And so those are some of the techniques that I'm going to show today. Uh, and, and this is stuff that I've been working with. I'm also going to introduce a new indicator called Case Trend um, that I think it's still a little early. I'm still learning the best ways to use it, but I really think it's a powerful tool and very, very simple. Um, but as you guys will learn, uh, I see a lot of familiar names in here. So those of you that have talked to me in the past, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty simple guy as far as I live my life by the, the KISS mentality, keep it simple, stupid. And... Uh, you know, that's what I think Case Trend does, but it really does help filter out some bad trades and keep us in the trend or trading with the trend. So with that, um, we have our standard disclaimer here. Um, as Juanita just uh, described with an trader standard disclaimer, uh, we all know that there's a lot of risk in trading, uh, especially commodities. Um, trading isn't for everyone, so we have to be very uh, careful. We have to manage our risk well. And... Um, you know, I won't, I won't bore you with too many of the details. We can all see that and read that. So in today's webinar, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the Case X range bars. Now, the Case X range bars are a fairly new bar type. We've had them on, on NinjaTrader for a few years. Now, these are a bar type that were exclusively created for NinjaTrader. So NinjaTrader is the only platform, NinjaTrader 7 and NinjaTrader 8, are the only platform that actually have access to the X-Range bars. So we're going to go through that, talk a little bit about how they work, what they'll do for you, and how they can help improve your trade signals. We'll also review the Case Easy Entry System because we're going to be using that in a lot of the uh, scalping type or, or you know, quick in and out type of signals uh, or, or systems that we're going to be looking at today. So I want to go through that, go through a little bit of how it works and what it does, but again, I'm not going to really use this webinar to go through all of the Statware indicators. Um, there's other webinars that you can view to do that. But I do want to go over keys or the Case Easy Entry System just so that we have an idea of what I'm talking about and what we're looking for. We'll review the traditional Statware guidelines, again, just as an overview, just to kind of give you an idea of, okay, this is how we traditionally look at it. This is the way that Cynthia had used the indicators when she was trading. But there's other ways to use Statware, and I can't emphasize that enough. Almost everybody I talk to, you know, gets stuck in this idea that case Statware is, you know, there's only really one way to use it. There's only really one guide, you know, one set of tools or rules. Um, and it only works on energy commodities because we, we are best known for our energy analysis. The indicators can be used on, on anything, whether it's foreign exchange, you know, uh, metals, uh, stocks, you know, ETFs, whatever it may be, these indicators, as long as there's data and as long as it's reasonably liquid, these, these indicators will help uh, improve your trade signals and help you to make better trade decisions. We'll also talk about that new indicator that I just mentioned, Case Trend. We'll talk about some of the math behind it. Not too much in detail. It's actually pretty simple, uh, but the different ways to use it. And then we'll also talk about some other signals that we've derived from the, uh, from the case indicators, um, a, what I call aggressive entries, which are a combination of momentum signals such as divergence, overbought, oversold, and the key signals to take some more aggressive entries in a scalping type of, uh, uh, of system. If you have any questions at any point, go ahead and type them in. I will try to get to them if I see them. Uh, if I don't get to them, then we may have to recap at the very end. I'm going to try to save, you know, about 15 minutes at the end of this webinar so that we can go through those. So case X range bars, um, they're based upon a, they're a range type chart. So they're based upon a high-low range target. What I mean by that is, let's say we're using a five-minute chart. Well, on a five-minute chart, every five minutes, it's very simple. A new bar will form. But here, with the case X range bars, what we do is we look at an underlying minute value or time bar value. So, for instance, in the lower right, I have an example. In fact, let me bring up my uh, pointer here. I talk with my mouse. So we have a 10-minute value. 
So what the X-range bars are going to do is they are going to look at the average high-low range of a 10-minute chart over the last 10 days. For that day, from the beginning of that day's session, uh, the open of that session, it will use that average high-low range for that day's target range for the high lows. So every bar is going to be approximately, the high-low range of every bar is going to be approximately the target range for that day. Then the next day it will reassess the previous 10 days and for that day it will use a slightly new target range. Now that now all of your historical data will remain the same, but on day one your target range might be 10 cents and on day two it might be 10 and a half cents and then on day three it might be 10 cents again. So what happens is your the, the high-low range of your bar, uh, very similar to a range bar, all of your bars are going to be approximately equal in size, meaning that the distribution of volatility is much more uh, evenly distributed across the chart. But unlike traditional range bars that use a fixed range all the time, these bars are going to adjust with market volatility. So as volatility increases, your bars are going to get slightly bigger. As volatility decreases on a day-to-day -day basis, your, your range is going to get slightly smaller. We also have a minimum number of ticks and a minimum number of seconds that have to pass before a new bar can form. This keeps it from forming one tick or one second bars. Um, these throttles in most markets you know, aren't going to really make a big difference. You know, if you're trading something like crude or gold or, or uh, you know, foreign exchange or whatever it may be, um, more than likely you're going to get more than three ticks in, in you know, a two or three second span. Um, but in illiquid markets, these will, these will come into effect. The bars are built with tick data, so there is a limited amount of data. You're limited to the amount of historical data that you can download from your uh, vendor, I believe, like with Kinetic, which is what I use. Uh, with NinjaTrader, it's, uh, I think it's eight days, six to eight days during uh, the trading session, and then after hours, I think you can get up to 180 days of tick data in most cases. So you can get a fair amount of data um, since we're building these with ticks. We also don't insert any ghost data. We're not going to force the high-low range of the bar to be exactly, you know, the target range. Um, so if your target range is, let's say, 10 cents, then you might have some bars that are exactly 10 cents, some that might be 9 cents, some that might be 11 cents. Um, well, actually, you won't have any that are 11 cents. They're going to be at the high-low range or less because if it goes to 11 cents, a new bar will form. But we're not going to fill in any gaps. We're not going to with fake data. Everything is real. We want to see the gaps in the charts. We think those are important. We use those as measuring points. So with that said, let's take a look at some of the X-range charts here. Um, so the first thing that we're looking at here is a three-minute chart on the bottom. So this is a traditional three-minute chart here. And we can see that we have periods of time in like the overnight session or early session where the market's very flat. This is a crude oil chart. Um, and yes, I use a lot of crude oil charts because I'm a, a very familiar with that market. But again, this will work on any different type of, uh, of chart that, or a commodity that you want to look at or symbol you want to look at. But then when we get some of these bigger bars, once the market starts to open, we start to break those bars into smaller bars. So the, the distribution of the volatility is much more even on the X range chart versus the, uh, versus the time bar chart. Now you can't see the chart because it's like you can't see the ch the webinar or you can't see the chart because it's too small in the in the uh, I know somebody's asking that question. I know that these charts are a little small. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in on them. Here we're looking at a 30-minute crude oil chart, and so what we have this is a good example where we have the overnight session or the access se session. Well, we get a bunch of small bars. Then all of a sudden, when the market starts to open, we get these big bars, and all of that gets broken into smaller bars, and this, this lack of volatility, so to speak, gets absorbed into a couple of bars. So all of these, you know, this 20 or 30 bars, whatever it is down here, gets absorbed into three or four bars, five bars, in the access session. Now, what you can see here is on the bottom, I have the average free range indicator plotted over a 14 period. And so on the time bar, our range, our average true range varies anywhere between about 15 cents and about 32, 33 cents. 
um, so a fairly wide distribution. Whereas with the X-range bars, it's pretty steady at right around 20 cents. It gets a little higher when we have this gap here, but nonetheless, you have a much more even distribution of volatility, which means that during periods like this, where the market isn't real active, we're not feeding a bunch of meaningless data into our indicators, and then when we have a breakout move, a large move, we're feeding more data or more bars into our indicators so that the market can, our indicators can react much more quickly to those moves. All right, so putting X-Range aside for now, we'll go through some more examples with using the X-Range bars. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Case Easy Entry System. Now, the Case Easy Entry System is actually very simple when it plots on the chart. We plot basically long permissions uh, with dots on each bar, the color-coded dots, and then we plot L's and S's for long and short signals. Now, what goes on behind the scenes is much more complex. What we're actually doing is we're looking to see whether or not the majority of momentum is permissioned long or permissioned short. So we're looking at three different momentum indicators in the background. If the majority of those momentum indicators are long, for instance, let's say we're looking at a stochastic, and we have the K line and the D line. The K line is usually faster moving than the D line. So if the K line's above the D, it's permission long. If it's below the D, it's permission short. Um, so if the majority of momentum is long, then we're going to have some sort of blue shaded dot uh, on our bar, telling us that that bar is permission long. If everything's permission short or the majority's permission short, we're going to have some sort of red shaded bar uh, or dot. Once we get beyond that, what we also do is we look at a longer bar length filter in the background. We're looking at a bar length that's three times the size of the chart that we're trading on or the chart that we're looking at. So if I'm looking at a five-minute chart, it is synthetically building a 15-minute chart in the background and looking to see whether or not momentum on that chart is also permission long or short. If it's permission in the same direction as our underlying chart, then we get what we call a first-class signal, which would be a darker blue dot for longs. And if everything's permission short, including the filter, we're going to get a first class short, which is going to show up as a pink dot on the bar. Otherwise, we might be in a market that's in transition. So if the majority of momentum is long, but our longer time frame filter is still short, then we're going to get a cyan colored or light blue dot, which is second class, a little bit of a weaker signal. If, and then vice versa for, for short permissions, or for a second class short permission, we're going to get a red dot. Even beyond that, we also look at bar structures, whether or not bars are rising, whether they're falling, making new highs, making new lows. That will determine the size of the dot, and this is going to be important in the, the examples that we look at. Hopefully, we'll be able to see the size of the dot since my charts are a little small. Um, but if the dot is big, that means that it's permission for an entry signal. If the dot is small, it's permissioned in a certain direction, but that's not a bar that we want to take an entry signal on. So, for instance, if we're permissioned long, but the bar is closing down, we may not want to enter on that bar. Then, above and beyond that, we also look at swings, whether or not we have swing highs, swing lows, pullbacks that hold prior lows or prior highs. And in that case, if we have those conditions be met and we have a big dot on the bar, we'll get an L or an S, which is a confirmed entry signal. So, like I said, there's a lot going on with keys, but when we look at it on the chart, it's actually fairly simple. Okay, so this is keys on the chart. We have the color-coded dots. We have our darker blue dots here for the first class long permissions, meaning everything including our higher time frame filter is long. We have here, we're kind of in a transition period where we have the lighter blue dots meaning that the longer time frame filter is still transitioning. It's still short, so it's transitioning to long, possibly. Then we have our short signals and our dots. And then we have our L's and our S's. And the color-coded L's and S's tells us whether or not, so for instance, if we have a green L, that is a long warning. And then if we have a blue L, that's a first-class entry signal. If we have an orange S, that's a short warning. Here we have a red S, that's a second class short signal, followed two bars later by a first class short signal. So for instance, so everything here is basically very simple. It tells us a lot about trend or trend direction. It tells us a lot about trend strength. 
and it also tells us whether or not we have confirmed entry signals, at which point we would look to take a long or short trade. Now, just because we have an L or an S on the chart, that doesn't always necessarily mean that we have to take a long or short trade at that point. We could, and I'll show an example, actually, I think it's on the next chart, where we do that. Um, but that doesn't always necessarily pan out. One of the things that we're going to be looking for is you'll notice that, and I should have made these dots bigger, I do apologize about that, but we're going to have some big dots and some small dots. And so when you look at the indicators, if you take a trial, you'll notice that, again, the big dots are permission for entry signals, the small dots are just showing us trend direction and trend strength, but they're not necessarily an entry, permission for an entry. Now this is our traditional stat where, okay, so I lied, we have another chart or two before we get to the one where we just take all the long and short signals, but this is our traditional stat where guidelines, okay? So in any of the webinars that we've done in the past that you've probably watched or a lot of the training videos that we do or in our documentation if you've ever taken a trial or if you use Statware, this is what we teach as the base guidelines, okay? These aren't set and fast or set, you know, set in stone rules. These are guidelines uh, to get people started with the indicators. And this is really geared towards more of a swing trading mentality. So what we look for is we look for our long warning signal, that's our green L. Then what we want to see is a pullback that holds the prior swing low, which in this case the pullback does. And then we have a permission long signal here to tell us to go ahead, and this is a first class signal, so we go ahead and enter our long trade. Now once we enter that long trade, we're going to place our stop at the appropriate level, usually DEV3, so our standard deviations of, of average true range are what we use for our dev stops. And then we monitor our KCD and KSPO indicators, which are our momentum indicators, for signals such as overbought or divergences. Now in this case, as the move up takes place, we get an overbought signal. That's this little red K. It tells us that we should exit 50% of our trade, tighten our stop to dev 1. We get a short warning. We hit dev 1. We exit our trade. The pullback that took place after the short warning holds a prior high. We get a confirmed short signal. We enter short. The market moves down. Doesn't give us any indication to get out. It moves back up. Hits Dev 3. We end up getting out. Probably at a small loss there. Then the market comes back down again. Gives us another short signal. We enter short during the formation of this little bullish flag. Um, during this bullish flag, because the market's not moving in our favor, we use some discretion here. We know that more than likely the market's going to break higher out of this formation. We aren't getting a break lower out of the, we're not breaking that lower trend line. We have five to eight bars of inactivity, so we go ahead and get out of our short trade. We end up entering long as the market's breaking out of the bullish flag. And then when we start to see our peak outs, which are again overbought or oversold, overbought signals in this case, and our divergence warnings, we go ahead and tighten our stop levels. Ultimately, Dev1 gets hit and we exit. Okay. So what ends up happening with these set of guidelines is you will have periods of time where you get into chop or very small swings and you, tr you, you, know, you might end up taking a couple of trades that are either break even or small wins, small losses until you finally get that breakout move and you enter on the trend and you ride that trade through the trend. So that's swing trading style. But if you're a more aggressive trader or you're a scalping trader and you're trading shorter bar lengths, a lot of times you're looking just to capture a quick couple of points. You want to capture the quick swings. This might lead to kind of a right-hand skew type of, uh, of, of strategy where you have, you know, 38, 40% wins with uh, 1.5, 1.75, maybe a 2 to 1 win to loss ratio or profit factor. Um, it's a profitable strategy, but in this case, what we're doing here with this system, and this actually works out fairly well, especially on longer bar lengths, on some of the shorter bar lengths, the commission costs that up, and I'll explain why here. But we end up taking a long trade anytime we get an L, and we take a short trade anytime we get an S. So you can see here, we're getting in very quickly, but then when we get this chop, we basically are getting, you know, going back and forth, and our commission costs add up. Now, 
on a longer bar length, this doesn't necessarily make a big difference because, because the trends that we end up getting into, you know, we have that right-hand skew on our profit factor. So we end up having these large, large gains and a bunch of small losses. Um, but when you're trading something like a much shorter bar length, like a three minute or a one minute or a five minute or even like a 15 minute type of chart, the equivalent of those, you get chopped up, your commission costs add up, and next thing you know, you're eating into your profit. So to avoid that, we might want to start looking at adding some filters. So one of the things that I have done in the past um, before we came up with this case trend indicator is I would use, you know, moving averages or uh, Bollinger Bands, different types of indicators to help filter the uh, long and short entries. Um, so in this case, I'm using uh, two linear regression lines uh, or a linear regression filter. I'm using an 8 and a 21 period. I usually stick to Fibonacci numbers just because I love them. Um, but what we're looking at here is you know, when the eight period Fibonacci, which, or the eight period linear regression line moves above the 21 where permission's long. So we're just adding in that filter. And so we would wait until we get our long signal. And at that point we would take our long trade. And then as the pink or the eight period linear regression moves below the 21 period, if we get an S, we take our short. Now what this does, as you can see, is it delays our entry. So our you know, when we get into these types of moves, I mean, on this, on this long entry, we would have probably gotten in on this, on this, the open of this bar, and we end up getting in on the open of this bar. So that would have ended up being a small loss. Then we have another trade here that ends up being a small loss because we get in long, we avoid a lot of the chop, and then we end up getting in short before we get in long again after the break higher out of that bullish flag. And then we have a nice profitable trade. So again, this is that right-hand skew type of strategy where we're going to have a low number of win, a lower number of wins, but a fairly high profit factor, a reasonable profit factor. And in this case, because we're cutting out some of the commission costs, we're going to be in better shape as far as the profit factor goes on an overall basis. The challenge is, is psychologically, not a lot of people um, can handle the right-hand skew type of, of strategies where you take, you know, you only have 38 or 40 percent wins, you know, 60 percent of the time your trades are losses, they're small losses, and your wins are much greater, usually, you know, one and a half to two times the size or more than your losses. But psychologically, people have a hard time dealing with that. There was a great article just recently in Stocks and Commodities Magazine um, by Perry Kaufman, and he talks a lot about that. And, and he, he, you know, he hits the nail on the head, as usual, with that idea that not a lot of people can take that type of strategy. But that's what kind of ends up with this type of, of uh, you know, scalping type system where you're getting in and getting out very quickly. Now, above and beyond that, this is our first look at the case trend indicator. And I'll explain the math behind it and some of it, you know, how it's calculated in just a moment. But in this situation, I'm only using, I, I still have the linear regression lines just to show the comparison. But in this case, what I'm doing is the linear regression or the, uh, the case trend indicator is this green line or this orangish red line. And so whenever it's green, we're permission long. Whenever it's orange or this orangish red, we're permission short. And I'm looking not for the L's, but I'm looking for the big dots in this case. Because the big dots, as a reminder, are basically saying that that bar is permission for a long or short entry. The only thing that it's missing that the L's and the S's don't have is the swing high or swing low before it. So you'll notice that we have a swing high here and then we get an L. We have a swing high and then we get an S. Or excuse me, it's a swing low before we get the L and then a swing high before we get an S. So in this situation though, I'm looking at these dots the big dots, and I'm going to enter long when I'm when my case trender or case trend indicator is green, and then I'm going to enter short when it's orange, and I have the big red dot. So here we're able to get in long, we get in short, we get in a little sooner. We're actually in this case probably going to have maybe a break even, maybe a small loss once we add in commissions. Then we get in long, 
But here we're able to filter out this short trade. And as long as we stay above this green trend line, we don't close above it, we're still in good shape as far as the long permissions and we're able to hold that trade all the way until we get this short signal and our trend case trend indicator flips. So again, what I'm looking to do with this case trend indicator in this situation is to eliminate some of the chop, some of the false, you know, false signals or premature signals and be able to hold my trades. It's kind of a hybrid between that scalping mentality and the swing mentality and hold those trades through the trends, eliminate some of the chop um, and, and eliminate some of the commission costs. So case trend is a brand new indicator. It's very simple. Um, if you look at it, I mean, it's a lot like the parabolic SIR, uh, but, and it's based upon the logic behind our dev stops. So we have an indicator called the case reversal amounts. Case reversal amounts are the uh, values that are used for our dev stops. And the dev stops are all based upon uh, standard deviations of the double true range. So double true range, instead of just using, uh, comparing two bars for their true range, we use three bars to compare the true range. So it's the, it's the true range over three bars rather than two. Just makes it a little bit smoother, uh, a little bit more data to consider. So the double true range, we like that better than just the regular true range. Um, it, we, and, and so because it's based upon true range, which is a basic measure of volatility, the case trend or our dev stops are going to adjust with the volatility of the market. Now, the one thing that we do differently, true range was all introduced by Wells Wilder back in the 70s. Um, great book, new concepts in, in technical analysis. Uh, if you've never read it, highly recommend it. Um, but in that book, he talks about using multiples of true range. So he would take the true range factor, multiply it by a factor of you know one or two or three or five or whatever it might be for stop levels or, or, or some sort of trending indicator. However, uh, when Cynthia started to use it, she wanted to introduce some sort of statistical significance into the indicator. And to do that, what she, instead of using multiples of true range, she used standard deviations of true range. So that we knew based upon the distribution of volatility or the distribution of the true range, where we were from a percentile standpoint. So if we're using a three standard deviation move or in our traditional case 3.6 standard deviations we know that we're at the 99.9 percentile of the average or the double true range over the last 30 bars if we're using a 30 bar look back therefore that tells us that there is a less than one percent probability that the market's going to return in our favor that it's going to continue in that direction that that's being hit so there's statistical significance to this so with the case trend indicator, we're looking at standard deviations either above or below uh, the high or low of the price. You know, so if we're looking at um, a rising market or a bullish market, we're looking at standard deviations subtracted from the highest high. And if we're looking at a down market, we're looking at standard deviations subtracted from the uh, highest or uh, from the lowest low um, or added to the lowest low. So. It's statistical in nature. It's going to follow the market. It's going to follow trend. And the indicator will flip whenever we close beyond the trend line or the case trend line or alternatively when we touch it. And I'll show examples of that in just a moment. So far in the uses that I've or in the testing that I've done with it, I find it to be best as a trend filter telling us, OK, if it's permission long, I'm only taking long trades. I'm going to avoid shorts and vice versa for if it's permission short or bearish. It can also be used as a trade entry or exit. It can also be used as a stop level. I'm even going to show an example where I use it as a profit target. I've even done some experimentation and I'm a little early in this but I'm liking it so far and I'll show an example of this where I'll plot multiple case trend indicators on one chart. So I'll plot like a two, a four, a six, and an eight standard deviation move of the true range and um, it will show exactly, uh, you know, when we're in chop or when the market's trending in a strong trend or whatever else. The last thing here talks about the, the trend direction and trend trigger level are public data members. So this means that the indicator itself can be called within strategies in NinjaScript. 
so that you can use it in your own strategies and back test it against your signals or against signals combined with case statware. So here's an example of the case trend as we have a market that's trending up, trending down. But in this case, whenever the market closes or a bar closes beyond the trend line, that's when it flips. Here, it's all based upon the hit. So whenever that, bar, whenever that trend line is hit, it flips. So it's a little more sensitive, sensitive, a little faster moving. You can see that it kind of flipped right in here when the close beyond stayed, stayed permission long. Different uses for different people based upon different risk appetites and trading styles. Personally, I prefer the close beyond, but that's a personal preference at this point. So here's an example that I was just talking about where I actually plot four different case trend lines, a 2, a 4, a 6, and an 8 standard deviation on a 30-minute crude oil X-range chart. Now what I'm looking at here is my rules for this system are that I will get long when, when all of the case trend or the green, um, so when all of the case trend indicators are, are below the market, and then I get a big blue or cyan colored dot from keys. So for instance, like right here, once everything, all four of these are below, and I get a big blue dot, I get long. Now that trade didn't work out, but sometimes, you know, not everything can work, right? Uh, my short is when everything, all the orange are above, and I get a short permission, right? Short big, big red, or big pink dot in this case, and then I have the S as well. And then I'm using the first standard deviation level, or the two standard deviation level, the first case trend line, as a stop. So I would get in and get out on the stop hit. So once this level's hit, I'm out. Here I get in, I get out once that, stop, that first stop level or that first case trend line is hit. I avoid all of this whip in here because we have a mixed set of case trend permissions. So what I'm trying to work towards here, and I tell this to people, um, I have a conversation with somebody yesterday, you know, the ultimate, the ultimate goal, in my opinion, the holy grail of trading would be an indicator that tells me when the market's in chop and not to trade, and then when the market's trending, I'm going to go ahead and trade. That's what I'm working towards with this. We'll see if we achieve it, right? But the idea here is when everything's permissioned in one direction, we have a strong trend in that direction. When we have the mixture of trend case trend above and below, we're in chop. So we can avoid some of the trades that would otherwise lead to small losses, uh, or break-even trades, or, or, or whatever it may be. Okay, so very simple and fairly straightforward. This next set of rules or, or signals that I'm going to show using case stat are what we call, or what I call, aggressive entries. For those of you that are familiar with our case X indicator, we call these uh, pierced darts. But what the idea is here is that we have a momentum signal such as divergence that's telling us that the market's going to turn in a direction in a statistically significant manner. Now, the studies that we've done with these indicators, with those signals, with divergence, shows us that divergence isn't always a great entry signal. But it is a good place to look to take profit and exit trades. Therefore, in our traditional guidelines for statware that we showed earlier on, we don't use divergence or overbought, oversold signals for entries. We use them for exit signals. That's a little bit different than a lot of people look at divergence and overbought, oversold signals. But again, our studies show that usually when you have one of these signals, you're going to have a statistically significant turn, but that turn isn't always big enough to reverse the trend. Now, what I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to combine the case momentum signals, the divergence signals, with the entry signals from keys to tell me if I have a possible quick hit uh, scalping type trade. So what I'm looking for is a bullish divergence, which would be shown by this green trend line, with an L that confirms within two bars of one another. So I want them to be within a tolerance. I want them to be close together. 
So actually this divergence, I know it's really hard to see with these charts, but this divergence is confirmed on the same bar that we get this L, this green L. So at that point, I'm going to take a long trade. Now I'm not really showing exits or anything like that yet. I'm just showing these aggressive entries right now. I'll use case trend as a tool for exiting in a minute. But here we get in long. Here we have a bearish divergence, this red trend line, with a orange short signal that confirms within two, at least two bars of one another. So that would be a short signal. We have another short signal here. Now in this case, we get a bearish divergence, but we have the blue dots afterward. So it's telling us this is not necessarily a good divergence yet. Now a little bit later, if we have some of our sensitivities changed, we would have had another short signal here. But with the defaults, we don't get a, a divergence. So we never take a short trade based upon this divergence here. Same thing with this divergence. We have this divergence. The dashed line shows us that it's a weak divergence. That means that it's confirmation bar closed opposite of the direction of the signal, in this case up. But when we get that confirmation, we're getting L's still. So it's telling us, look, this is not a good point to take a short trade. But here, once we get this divergence, we start to get the S's and we get the red permissions, and then eventually those turn to pink. So this would be a good place to look to take a short. Again, not necessarily telling us that the trend is reversing, but that we may have a good, quick trade that we can get in, capture a couple points, and get out. So here I'm going to use the aggressive entries and the case trend as a stop. So same exact signals, I get a long trade, and then I'm going to use the case trend. I'm using, I believe, oh, I didn't mark it. This still looks like the three standard deviation. You might be able to use a two standard deviation case trend, whatever you see fit uh, based upon your risk appetite. But we get the long signal and then we use that as a stop. So we have a good quick little trade here, make a couple points, get out. Um, then we have our short trade. We end up getting out once the stop gets hit. So this is a scalping type of mentality mixed with, a, instead of using a profit target though in this case, I'm using a stop so it still can take advantage of some of these trends. So for instance here when we get this short trade, we have a nice big down move. We hold our stop level the entire time. It eventually gets hit. We end up with a very good trade. Um, here we get the long. We get the move up. We would have actually gotten stopped out in here, but then we would have had another long trade we could have taken advantage of this move up, we end up with a short trade, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the idea again here is that we are getting into trades very quickly. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, we're running, running it, we're actually out of time, but um, so I'll be a little bit quicker here, is when I very first get into these trades, I'll look at placing a stop a point or two above the previous high until my case trend flips and then I'll place the stop at those levels. In this last example, I'm using the case trend as a profit target. So here I'm using, it's, a, it's actually an eight standard deviation case trend indicator. But we get in the long, I place my stop just below the prior swing low, and then when we hit the profit target, we get out. Again, we get a short, we have two short signals, but this short, we end up getting out here at this profit target. Here we get in long, we get out the profit target. Here we get in short, we get out of the profit target. So all of these ended up being profitable trades. The difference between this is I'm going to have, generally speaking, a higher win probability but a smaller profit factor than the previous system because I'm not going to be able to take advantage of these longer term trends. Okay, so there's that trade off. So just to recap very quickly, we talked about X range bars and how they can help improve your trading and improve your, your signals by uh, more smoothly distributing the volatility, adjusting for volatility on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, anytime you're using an intraday chart, I highly recommend using the X range bars or some range type of bar rather than time bars. Uh, that's my preference. Not that time bars are bad. I like time bars for certain uses, but when it comes to trade signals, I really believe that range type charts are superior. Case Easy Entry System, we talked about an overview of it, what our traditional guidelines were, but again, I can't stress enough, 
that there is more to case statware than meets the eye, so to speak. Um, going back to my 80s cartoons there. But what we're looking at is, is you know, statware is a set of trading indicators. The functions or the, the, the data members, all the signals, anything that you see with that is accessible in NinjaScript and can be built into trading strategies. It can be built into something that you can backtest. It can be built into your own uh, renditions of our uh, versions of our indicators that you, you know, to add in some of your own flair. So it's very adaptable to different trading styles, different chart types, different risk appetites. Case Trend, our new indicator, again, very simple, but I think it's a very powerful tool, and I think it will really help uh, improve or, or at least keep you trading with the trend. And then we talked about some of the more aggressive entry signals and, and uh, so forth. A recap of our standard disclaimer, again, we, we, you know, we have to manage risk and we have to understand that there is risk in trading. So with that, I will open the floor for questions. Um, there will be a, well, actually I'll let Juanita answer that as far as the recording. I do believe that this was being recorded. Um, we are offering a 30-day trial of Case Statware. So if you are interested in a free 30-day trial of Case Statware and the X range bars, you can do so by going to this link here, casego.com slash ntwebinar2018. I'm going to put that into the chat right now. So that landing page will have it kind of be the place to go for this webinar if you're interested in looking at statware. You can register for a trial of CaseX, or excuse me, Case Statware and the X range bars. I'll also put a PowerPoint. There is also a PowerPoint of today or a the PDF of today's PowerPoint up on that site. I have the training materials. I also have materials that tell you how to use the case indicators in custom ninja scripts so that you can build your own strategies and trading indicators using our signals and, and, and data. Um, there's an overview video of case statware and the, the traditional guidelines. Um, I will also post the link to the webinar uh, recording once, once we get that. Um, and we'll also have the subscription links up there so that once your trial has ended, if you decide that you want to move forward with us because you love Case Statware and love the indicators and it's really helping you uh, to go ahead and subscribe either by subscribing to the traditional month-to-month -month subscription, which is $195 per month, or you can take advantage of our webinar special, which is a discounted rate, 25% discount. It's a 13-month subscription for $18.95. That's recurring, so every 13 months you'll be charged $18.95 unless you cancel. Um, we also, on the Case & Company website, uh, at caseco.com, we have archived statware uh, videos, webinars. Uh, for those of the, you that don't know, we specialize in energy commodities, so WTI, Brent, natural gas, heating oil, diesel, um, HSFO, so on and so forth. Uh, we have weekly and daily newsletters that we put out uh, that for a subscription base. And then we also do free weekly blog posts. I do one on Tuesday for WTI. Sometimes I'll throw Brent in there before the EIA stats come out on Wednesday. And then on Wednesday afternoon, I usually do one on natural gas before the EIA stats come out on Thursday morning. Just a very short term, you know, what do we think is going to happen with prices, a forecast of what's going to happen with prices the next day. Um, we also have our corporate and institutional services on there. Uh, so Jim is asking me, so at this time, ask any questions. If you want to follow up with us on Twitter, Facebook, Stock Twits, I encourage you to follow us. We put out stuff on, from time to time, especially those daily uh, blogs on Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, on the energy commodities. So if you trade energy, talk to us. We've got a lot of information that can be very, very helpful. All of my direct contact information is, is there as well. Okay, so somebody else is asking what's the difference between Case Statware and Case X. Uh, so case statware is our traditional set of tr trading indicators. Uh, you plot the indicators on the chart, you'll see the momentum, you'll see the underlying permissions, you see the color-coded dots, the L's, the S's, lots and lots of information on the screen to process. Case X is a derivative of case statware. It uses the same algorithms, the same indicators. The difference is, is it only plots symbology on the chart. 
arrows, triangles, and diamonds. We did that because um, a lot of traders already have a lot of information on their screen. And so they don't want to add more indicators. It just takes it just clutters everything up. They just want our signals. So they can put case X on the screen and have a color-coded arrow that tells them that they need to get out uh, or take profit or a color-coded diamond that tells them this is a strong entry point. So it's a step towards a more systematic approach, but it's still very discretionary in, in nature. Um, like I said, it's the same signals, the same algorithms as Statware. You just don't see all of the underlying information like the color-coded dots the momentum values, uh, the divergence lines, that kind of thing. You just have color-coded symbols. Uh, case trend is included in the Statware subscription. So somebody asked about that. That is included in the Statware subscription. So when you take the trial, case trend will come with it. Uh, we do have case Statware on IntraTrader 7. I actually need to build or finish building and testing. I wanted to have it done for today. I'm going to try to get it done tonight, but the case trend for Trader 7 is still in works. Uh, one little bug I'm working out right now, hopefully I'll have that posted in there tonight. If not, as soon as I get it posted, anybody that takes an Trader 7 trial, I'll send it to them. Uh, Jim, thank you. I appreciate the, the question. Uh, Jim P. is asking if we have alerts built into the system to give notice of longer shorts. Yes, we do. That is something that we built into this newest version of Statware about a year ago, version 991. It does have alerts for all of the signals. Those alerts can be customized with sounds and can be turned on or off. So the long and short signals, the divergence signals, the peak outs, the KCD peaks, any of those signals can be uh, turned on with an alert. Um, you can also build alerts into, if you use our indicators in your own strategy, you can build the alerts in there as well. Um, does this work well with NQ? I mean, I know we all have a very, uh, you know, we, we've gotten used to, and it's funny, I mean, I've been in the markets long enough now that I've seen this, this take place. Um, We've gotten used to vendors showing us and saying, okay, you know what, you're going to trade the, the E-mini S&P or NQ on a five-minute chart. And this is exactly the size of the position that you're going to take, and these are the, what the signals are going to tell you to do. And they back-tested it, and they fine-tuned it, and they basically, you know, I'm not putting them down in no way, shape, or form. A lot of those people are very successful, and they've created great systems. But that's a different mentality than we have. Case Statware will work on anything you put it on. That doesn't mean it necessarily will work well dependent upon your trading style, your rules, and whatever else. So, um, you know, will it work on NQ? Yeah, it will. Will it work well? It depends upon your trading style and the signals that you use. And that's one of the things that we leave open to you. Now, today's webinar was to give you some new ideas on how to use our indicators to take advantage of the Statware signals on whatever it is you trade. But for me to tell you that it's going to work well on a 15-minute chart or a 5-minute chart or on a certain symbol or on a certain commodity or a certain stock, I can't really answer that because it's, it's, it's an arbitrary question from our standpoint. Um, let's see. So Joe J, uh, the webinar will be, will be posted. I, uh, NinjaTrader will post. I believe they send it out. They'll be posting it on their YouTube channel, and I will post it on casego.com under the NT webinar, that link that I put in there a little bit earlier. I'm going to go ahead and send it out again. It will be on there. As soon as we have that link, I will post it, and you'll be able to watch this thing again. So, uh, And if you have any questions, my direct contact information. Email usually works best because I'm on the phone all day long, but if you need to call me, call me. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, let's see, Jack A is asking, as a subscriber to Statware, what do I need to do to get the trend indicator? Also, X range bars are not among the choices that I have. Um, oh, so, uh, Jack, um, case trend, I'll get you set up. I'll send you case trend. I'll send you the newest version of the Statware that includes case trend. I will also send you the X range bars. So, we will take care of that. I'm noting that right now. So, Daniel or I will send it to you. For those of you that don't know, a lot of times when you talk to us, um, Daniel Case, Cynthia's son, he handles a lot of the training and working with clients. So you guys will, most likely, he will be your frontline contact for you know, most of your trials. 
but I am there to help as well if you have advanced questions or whatever else. Um, <coughs> so can you lease Xware or the Case X? So Statware and Case X are both, you can lease both of them. They're both the same cost. Um, you know, even though we went through Statware in this webinar, you can also take a trial of Case uh, X if you'd like to, and we will honor the webinar special price if you decide to go that route. Um, so, Sonny, you're asking if Case, uh, are you asking if Case Trend is also available in Case X is what I'm assuming? Right now, it is not, but I will build it in, and I'll send it to you as well, Sonny, because um, I know you're on trial right now. Lee, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, as I said earlier, Statware and CaseX are available on NinjaTrader 7 and 8. Uh, right now, Case Trend is working and available on NinjaTrader 8. I'm still working out a kink on NinjaTrader 7, but hopefully I will have that done by like tonight, tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Somebody else is asking if we have a trade room. No, we do not. We do not have a trade room. I unfortunately do not have time to day trade. Um, I, aside from doing our indicators and all the stuff that I do, looking at charts and whatever else, and, and um, I am very involved in the energy commodities, in working with clients on hedging and risk management and forecasting markets. I am, like I said earlier, usually on the phone all day long, every day, so I don't have time to monitor my charts and day trade. So we do not have a trade room, um, but, you know, anytime you have questions, we're more than happy to help. Uh, somebody's asking me which time frame I use on crude. I personally on crude, I look at, I, I monitor and watch the daily, and then on the intraday, I usually use um, something like the equivalent of a 15-minute, a 30-minute, and a 60-minute uh, X-range chart when I'm using IntraTrader. Um, if I'm using other platforms and I'm using range-type bars or our case bars, uh, I love the 35-cent and the 65-cent bars. Now bar type. This is a whole other webinar. I've done it before, so you can watch it. It's out there. It's on our YouTube page and on our Caseco page. Uh, time frame or bar length is very much dependent from a trading standpoint, not from an analysis standpoint, but from a trading standpoint, is very much dependent upon your risk appetite. Meaning, like, if I'm trading crude and I'm only willing to risk 100 bucks, I, I can't trade a daily chart. Um, it's too much risk. You know, the daily chart is way too much risk for 100 You know, you're going to lose your $100 on the daily chart. So you might have to trade, you know, five minute chart or a three minute chart or a one minute chart. So the chart that you trade or the bar length that you use is very much dependent upon your risk appetite. Um, unfortunately, Emma, I would I wanted to show, I wanted to share out my screen, but the screen sharing wasn't working on my computer. Um, so I'm not able to show any, any charts today. Um, I did say that we have the platform, that the indicators are available on other platforms. If you go to caseco.com, you'll be able to see which platforms we have it on. Um, all right, excellent. Are there any other questions before we wrap up here? Juanita, I'm sorry. I went over by like 17 minutes, so I apologize. No worries, Dean. It was a great webinar, and I think everybody got some great information. So no worries at all. Thank you for taking your time and uh, really explaining exactly what Case & Company offers and, you know, your new um, new indicator. So it's very exciting to have you in our room today, and we do thank you for your time. I also want to thank everybody who joined us today. Everyone in attendance will receive an on-demand recording of today's event, so please keep an eye out for that email. NinjaTrader Ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly vendor events as a value-added service for our clients. If you do find value in these events, we hope that you'll attend them on a regular basis. And I just threw a link in the room with our upcoming and archived webinars for anyone who's interested in um, viewing previous webinars and seeing the upcoming webinars we do have. We'd like to remind you the information provided in this was that of Case and Company and not of Ninja Traders. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Again, we do appreciate the time you spend with us. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinars. Happy trading from all of us here at NinjaTrader Ecosystem. Thank you again, Ding, and have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, NinjaTrader. We appreciate it. Have a great day.